Tools for Gunpla. What kind of tools would you want to need if you're starting to build Gunpla? Now, I uh, have my own experiences and what people uh, essentially always need is a nipper. Now, this is an entry grade nipper and with this you will be able to cut out the pieces and uh, assemble the kits. Now this is a affordable and cheap ass nipper <laughs> to be honest but it's flat here and all flush and that is the most important part when buying a nipper. Now since this is an entry grade nipper you it will leave knob marks and if you're not into knob marks and you want to uh, make your kit as nice as possible you could fix those knob marks with other tools but Next step that I use is the build-up nipper, which I use for cutting out the parts, but just a few millimeters from the gate. So that means that this is used for cutting out the rough parts or all parts. And then I use an, uh, a high-end nipper like the display one, a single bladed nipper where the one blade is very very thin and it's also all flush and this is a precision tool and a fine piece of tool that needs to be taken care of that means you do not cut um, thick pieces of plastic with this one you do that with one of the other ones this goes through the plastic like butter and it leaves a much nicer knob mark you can never eliminate them 100 percent now a nipper is is one of the most important part what i also uh, advise people to have is a mat like this these are from display and are self-healing match mats and that just means that basically if i take a scalpel and i cut the mat it will leave a tiny mark but after some time you will not be able to see it um, what people need as well, and the, the mat is more if you're panel lining and you're cutting out pieces and you know it's, it's just easier to have your parts lying here to see them, depending on what color they are of course. If you panel line, if you don't waste uh, ink on your table, and if you cut out uh, water slide decals, you can do it on this mat. So that's an essential for me. Now a tweezer. I have them in all different brands and sizes. It's also essential for me. I use the tweezers for placing um, stickers, water slides, decals. I don't use stickers anymore. I use water slides. And for me, it's impossible to do with my hands. So I use these precision tweezers that are, uh, yeah, very precise. Good piece of equipment. <clears throat> you can also use it for placing small plastic parts, etc. The scalpel also comes in different brands and sizes. This blade here is very small and this blade here is bigger. So it all depends on your needs. Uh, this is uh, the display one and this is the Vallejo Deluxe one with a tiny magnet up here. I'm not quite sure why, but it's here. Um, I use them for removing knobs as well some, at some points where they're easier to come by than with file and I use them for the, the decals. You could use them for other things as well, but they would be pretty nice to have in a collection. Now those are more or less the essentials. You can use sandpaper. I have different kinds of uh, sanding sticks where you just mount the grid you need. Here it is grid 1500 and you have them sanding bolts in different sizes. This is grid 600. Uh, but what I use the most is actually the Razor or the Razor Plus from Gun Primer. These are glass files with a very special surface that actually only removes the parts of plastic that are uh, extruding from whatever you're filing on. And they hardly leave any marks on the plastic afterwards so these are for me essential uh, depending on if you want to use x amount of money on your tools 
Now, another thing for me that are essential are panel lining. You can have a Gundam marker like this. You can have the uh, Tamiya panel lining color, which comes with this small tip here for you to uh, apply on in the panel lines. A bit easier to, uh, to use on very small stuff uh, compared to this one, which is also the flowing one. This is the pour type, which means it's ink that flows through the uh, lines. We also have it in the... Uh, like this, where it's like a, a pen you use. You can have those in brown, br uh, black, gray, dark gray, etc. all depending on your needs. And then you need a marker remover or whatever you use to remove these kind of inks with, of course, a cotton bud which is also essential. Now I have cotton buds in all different sizes and uh, this is a normal cotton bud. So if you need something that needs to go into small places like the pointy one there, you use those one. <clears throat> so that's, uh, if you have these tools, then you're ready and set to go and make awesome gun plaquettes. Now, do you use other kinds of tools? People probably ask, yeah, I use a uh, mark setter and mark softer for the uh, the decals when I use the water slides. I don't sell these myself due to um, um, some, some markings on them. They're illegal. We actually have the adhesive from uh, adhesive softer from Tamiya, which is perfectly fine. I just bought these years ago before I even opened the shop and they last for a lifetime. So I use those as well. I use <clears throat> this one. Oh, that was nice. Yeah, this uh, vise, don't flip it upside down. I use the vise for uh, holding in small parts when I need to use either decals or mounting some stuff. Um, also for presentation when I'm taking pictures, actually. And these tools are fine precision tools as well, made out of this, uh, I think it's some kind of aircraft alloy, that's at least what they call it. Um, fine mechanism, heavy. We have so many display tools, I don't use all of them, uh, but I will essentially. Right now I just started building again. Very primitive, a holder for all your nut parts so they don't like scattering around your table. I use uh, this holder as well to keep my stuff organized. Besides, I have a hobby, hobby zone setup. I use this for, uh, yeah, basically all my essentials. Now, if you're into different kinds of stuff <clears throat> with your model kit or you sometimes misplace some stuff, this part separator, I actually have two different ones. This one, I don't sell anymore. Metal was actually pretty good. Is pretty good, but... Uh, can be rough on the plastic if you're not careful. These, I think, can be bought somewhere. I think they're also used for opening watches. This is what I sell in the store, Spandai's own. Yes, I did panel line it. Now for prying parts from each other without destroying them. And uh, we even got this one to uh, push out poly caps or push in poly caps. And, uh, this is, is quite good if you uh, squeezed something together and it needs to be undone because you did something wrong. One of the other things I also use when filing is a uh, small brush. I actually just got a new one with a long uh, handle that are as uh, a demo version from Gun Primer. I will show that later on. Um, I use this just to brush some of the excessive dust away. I use the uh, Gun Primer Balancer, which is used for there's a gray part and a white part. This one makes the surface matte and this one polishes it all shiny again. 
and then you can use, I rarely use it, but the last piece of the gate remover set from Gun Primer is the Recover. It's actually a piece of cloth that polishes the plastic back to its normal shine. So if you don't want the matte one or you don't want the glossy one, you polish it with the Recover. I think, of course, I use uh, these coatings. They're not essential, but they, they do um, give the surface a matte surface. So yeah, either matte or high gloss, depending on if you want the kit to be all shiny or you want the kit to uh, be matte and thereby not having this plastic shine. I use these Tamiya colors, uh, coatings. And when I am spraying those, I use the uh, station for crocodile beaks for holding the parts. What you see here is a gun from, uh, this one is from the Perfect Grade Red Frame Astray and this one is from the Strike Rouge. And they have been coated with matte. This Sky Grasper here is not coated where you can see, see here the plastic shine, it is non-existent on these more or less. They only got one layer of coating. We could do more if we needed to go into these creaves here. But it completely changes the look of the gun. Now these are of course not painted, but they could look primed in my opinion. Um, down here you can see we might need to spray some more, but I really never use these guns <coughs> for my kits. So I will leave them with one layer of coating. <clears throat> Sorry, same goes for, the, goes for the shield. Has also been coated once. And it loses its plastic shine. And it protects the water slides. I think, I mean, I have a lot of stuff in my setup. I have a device that sucks plastic dust. I have a vacuum cleaner to vacuum excessive knobs that I lost, but that's just, you know, luxury and show off stuff. I like that. Um, I have these, oh, this is just showing off what I have in my store. It's not essentials. These, uh, I can't even remember, but it is, it is handle for sanding. We have drills if you're into the Customization, you need to drill bullet holes or whatever. Holes for wiring LED kits. We have all kinds of stuff, not gonna show that, but the essentials is more or less what's on the table here. I use the markers, the nippers, tweezers, knives, and mats. And um, that's about it. That is what I use personally. And my entire collection has not been uh, painted, painted. I mean, I paint with Stuff like uh, the gold marker here. No, that's not it. This one. And it really covers well, uh, very well. Uh, the pigment is the, in this is, is just awesome. And I use this for verniers or detailing together with my uh, chrome markers from Molotov. That actually looks a lot like the aluminum parts or chrome parts that you buy for the verniers <clears throat> you could actually give it, it a 99 percent just as cool finish um, so yeah that's more or less what i use all the time sometimes it happens that i need to dig uh, something off in my shelves here and find some other kinds of tools but it rarely happens so if you have any questions regarding any of these tools, I will try to put some links in the description to show you where on the website you can find all these tools um, that are in stock, at least. This one was not. Um, and that's just it. Plain and simple. You really don't need that much. Uh, it all depends on your budget and how gear fixated you are. I never go down on tools. So I would definitely if I spend hours and hours on a hobby with uh, dozens of kits, I would buy a good nipper. And the same goes with this one. I would always buy these essentials you can buy for, it's not that, that much, like one or two master grades maybe if you need everything. So 
That was uh, my uh, advices. And just if you're pretty new to the hobby or you have your doubts what you really need and what's just convenient, um, that's my take on it. If you have any questions, as I said, or you think I should make a video of something else of the setup I have, uh, feel free to write in the comments. And uh, I will see you next time. Bye.